Okay, we're just going to go over the arm tie stir reaction. The arm tie stir reaction is basically the addition of a diazomethane to a carboxylic acid derivative such as acid chloride in this case, which can be made from carboxylic acids with thionyl chloride or some other chlorinating reagent. Um, and it's basically a, a homologation reaction. Um, so if you look at the final product over here, we've got a, a methylene or a CH2 group stuck in between the R and the carb now where we didn't have it before. And so it's a good way of, of, of adding um, CH2 groups into your um, backbone there. And also it's a good way of making um, other species because the nucleophile at the, that's used at the end to quench it almost uh, can be from the alkoxide series, looking at alcohols. Uh, you can add a hydroxy group to make carboxylic acid uh, from water and amides and so on uh, from amines. So it's actually a really useful reaction to add a lot of functionality in one in one hit really. So let's have a look. It's enough of me talking. Let's have a look at the um, let's have a look at the mechanism. So diazomethane. Oops, I just changed the colour. So diazomethane is. Is this species here? I get charge on there. So that will come in. Attack that. You've seen this before. This double double edit arrow arrow before. Basically, it goes through a tetraethyl intermediate, and that comes back down from the oxygen, collapses, and kicks out chloride in this case as a leaving group. So that goes to give us our first intermediate. You can already see um, part of the um, part of the building blocks there for this, and we get a chloride ion, and then because this is quite an acidic proton here, uh, it's, it's next to this group here and and the carbonyl. We lose um, this stabilized by the nitrogen there that's easily taken off you've got some excess uh, diazomethane anyway that'll pick that up so it's not very um, it's, it's quite a labile proton there so that'll come off to give us this species here this um, beta diazo keto compound oops put the nitrogen in let's draw it like that for now because that's how I I meant to draw it. Okay, so that's charged there. And put that charge there, that just come from here. And it's just moved around. Just give us a bit more room on here. Okay, so this is a resonance form for um, this. Let's draw the other resonance form in here. Put the negative charge on there. Nitrogen. I always like to draw the resonance forms because it gives you an idea of where the reactivity is. Or in this case, you can see a good leaving group now in nitrogen. So that that'll stay as it is until you heat it up. And you can add catalyst if you want to drive this off or heat. And and what happens is it forms a, a carbene because it takes the electrons with it. Um, so if we if we draw the, the carbene, um, you can do it in, let's do it stepwise actually, it's probably easy, I'm going to try and do it concerted, but if we do it stepwise you'll see. So we lose electrons to the nitrogen, nitrogen comes off, to off gases, it's a gas, and that leaves us a carbene. Let's draw that. So you've got a negative charge on there, but you've also got a vacant orbital now. You've still got a proton on there, so we've took one of them, but there is another one there, so I'll, I'll actually draw that on. So this is actually deficient. This is a, a deficient species now. So we tend not to draw the negative charge in for carbines. We'll just put the, the, the electrons in. Um, like this, okay. 
Now what happens now is these electrons go in here, this goes up and back, and instead of going back to here, because this is electron deficient anyway, we get a migration, we get a Wolf Kishner, uh, sorry, a Wolf rearrangement onto here. So this is going to be, let me just um, put these arrows somewhere else because it might be a bit confusing. That's my creaky chair, I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, so I put them in that way and then you can see that these are going to go in the, not in the orbital, in a vacant orbital. So it's a migration across. I might have to draw this again because it's getting a bit getting a bit confusing with the arrows. That's a carbon. That's how we draw um, ketenes. I'll draw the proton there. I call pro hydrogens protons, so that's just from my uh, NMR background and and days, I suppose. Okay, so. We've got a, a nice little uh, wolf rearrangement there. Wolf. And if you look on this side of the of the website here, there'll be a link to the wolf rearrangement as well. There's quite a few of these reaction mechanisms are all related really. Now this is a ketene. Okay, so I'll draw that and try and get you a colour. Actually dark blue doesn't show up very well, so that's a ketene and that's that's kind of where all these intermediates go because these are building blocks for homologation reactions and then all you need to do then is get your nuclear file I tend to draw nuclear files like this a generic nuclear file comes in tags a double-headed arrow goes for a tetrahedral intermediate comes back and then these kick out and pick up a proton from solution okay and that will give you your final product I'll draw that hydrogen in red so you know what that is so we've got our double one there on our nuclear file from here and then we have H R and the proton we've just picked up. So that's it. So we've actually, if you look at this, so that, that's it, that's a mechanism. If you look at this, we've actually added this group in between. That's basically come from diazomethane minus a proton from somewhere else. So you can imagine that, that could actually pick up some other electrophile, you think about it. You know, if you want to check the mechanism out, you can add deuterium, so you can have deuterated uh, species to pick the protons up, and so on and so on. Um, so yeah, that is the um, that is the antiester uh, mechanism, and yeah, I have a look at the Wolf rearrangement. So it's very very similar. Um, so that's it, the antiester reaction.